Welcome to the Richmond Public Library's tutorial on Inkle. Today's guest star is PJ Hoover. But welcome to Richmond Public Library's uh, tutorial for uh, for Inkle and Inky and Choose Your Own Adventure. And we're going to be talking today with PJ Hoover, who is an author of many types of books. But one of the books that she writes is something called Pick Your Quest, which I actually mentioned in the tutorial as well. So welcome, PJ, uh, and thanks, thanks for, for coming on to, on to the show. Thanks for having me here. On the left-hand side, you have your code, and then on the right-hand side, it plays the game, so you can just oh, like, fun. torch, search a room, that kind of oh, stuff. Oh my gosh, this is great. Yeah, and it's also a really interesting way um, of plotting out a book if you're really stuck and you're not sure, you know, what to do, this is a really fun way of doing it. And, and it's just fun. It's just really and can cool. you, once you, once you create the game, can you embed it like in a website? It will export as a website. So, okay. and so this is the tutorial. And so. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I made, actually, I made a really complicated one that, um, We'll be putting onto the library website and I'll show it. I'll, I'll send you a link when it's finished. Yeah, this is so cool. Yeah, the complicated one I made, you can actually, it uses variables. So you can actually do things like find a better sword, change out your armor, find potions, fight monsters. You have hit points, armor class, like the whole works. It's nice. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's pretty fun. That sounds actually amazing and something that I would love to waste time doing. Well, you know, if you were worried about getting your writing done this week, I've just solved your problem. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. So let's talk a little bit about, about your books. Um, what did you start off writing? Because I think you pretty much write everything. I have, uh, I have a lot of your books. Uh, I don't <laughs> have you. every single one, but I'm pretty close to having all of them. If there was an award for collecting an author's books, I would be in the running for sure. <laughs> and... And, and what I really notice is that you kind of write the gamut, like whatever inspires you, you just seem to jump into and you do it well. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, you know, I started, you know, my, my first book was a book called The Emerald Tablet, and it was kind of like my love letter to everything that I loved nerdy and geeky growing up. It was all shoved into this one book, The Emerald Tablet. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, but it had a lot of mythology blended in and superpower, or like special powers, telepathy, telekinesis and stuff like that. And the more I wrote like the mythology, the more I realized I loved writing mythology stories because that was like kind of like the thing that I fell in love with when I was younger, you know. Um, I mean, I was an engineer, but I also got like a history major. I had like this, you know, crisis where I was like, I want to be an archaeologist instead and, and, and stuff like that. So I've always had that love of mythology. So I would say that's like my my very special favorite thing is the mythology. And then everything else kind of fits in around that as best it can. That's interesting. I I thought that when I was when I was a kid, I thought that I wanted to be an archaeologist too. The same same reason too, because I love mythology and dinosaurs. I really like dinosaurs. Oh, nice. I, yeah, and like the, be like Indiana Jones too. You know? And I think that was a big big hook, right? I just seen the Indiana Jones movie, and I thought that's what archaeology was going to be, right? <laughs> like you'd be this cool guy in a hat and this leather jacket and going on adventures. And I'm scared of snakes, so it works. Yeah, me too. So there we yeah. go. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. However, you find out that it's a lot of meticulous scrubbing at a rock with a toothbrush right and apparently you had to had to be very good at math which at the time I, I really wasn't <laughs> so I became a writer instead ah nice nice <laughs> really enjoy mythology you wrote a few you know you've written books uh, uh books on that and then all of a sudden pick your quest yeah and so actually that that started with mythology too so one of my books it was called Tut the Story of My Immortal Life about King Tut who's 14 and immortal and stuck in you know Washington DC and when I wrote that book I was trying to think of fun extras to put on my website you know that you uh, do to try to get kids engaged when they visit your website and so I did like a Minecraft server where I created King Tut's tomb and stuff like that and I did a video game in Scratch that I wrote also I don't know if you guys use Scratch yeah. um, but I, I wrote like a 14 level escape from King Tut's tomb video game and then I was like you know I've always wanted to write my own choose your own adventure. And so I just kind of sat down and, and like 
planned it all out and then wrote out these like you know all these different options with 40 endings and I, you know I wrote my first choose your own adventure and that was like free on my website um for years you know there was like a link to it and then when I started you know self-publishing more chapter books and stuff like that I'm like hey I could self-publish this choose your own adventure book choose your adventure style book let me get that <laughs> right <laughs> and um and then so I did that and it was kind of like the start of this amazing beautiful thing that I love doing you know it's just so much fun to write them and how do you plot them out like what do you you know, it's one thing to plot out a book when you go from beginning to end, but you're going from beginning to end to end to end to end. <laughs> you know, and it's funny because my agent just went on submission today with a how to write your own choose your own adventure book <laughs> that I wrote. <laughs> so fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, because it's, it is a really fun form of writing. And so, you know, it all starts with the planning. I used to, I used to sit at the kitchen table and plan it out on a big piece of paper. I think I did that for about two or three of them. And then I realized that I don't write that quickly, but I can type very quickly. <laughs> so I found some flow charting software online, some uh, just free flow charting software. And so I planned everything out online ahead of time. I mean, I'll, I'll write out ideas like possible ways to die and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's all done like on the computer in this flow charting software. I kind of map out what I think it'll look like, how many endings I want. And then I just start, you know, adding in ideas and, you know, it is a, a lot of different plots, but it's like, you know, I'll follow one whole branch path all the way to the end and then I'll go back to the other and I'll fill that in, you know, and till it's till it's all done. So once you got it planned, it's easy. But. <laughs> so once you finish the planning, once you finish just, the planning, yeah. it's just all you got left is the writing and that's that's not too bad. <laughs> so do you do you make one story from beginning to end then and then sort of add in other endings or you just go by how um, it feels at the time or? It, well, you know, so let's take something like the, the King Tut's, well, okay, now let's just pick a more fun one because I have them here. So I wrote like this Escape from Minecraft, which is very fun. Um, turns out, so what, what basically what I did before I even started planning it out, I wrote down all the cool things that could happen in Minecraft, you know, whether you're tunneling in a cave, whether you um, are in the water, whether you're, you know, at a witch's hut, what, all these different things and elements that can happen. And then I was like, all right, so I want to try to get all these in these different paths. And so I kind of like, I, I put like little place markers. I'd be like, all right, when I go down this path, this is going to lead you to like the creeper. If you go down this path, you're going to find the skeletons with the armor over here. Over here, you're going to raise animals, you know, your, your pigs and horses and stuff like that. Um, and just so trying to like leave little placeholders normally is what I'll do. And then I'll actually go in and do the full planning at that point onward, you know, if that makes yeah. sense. It, it sense. actually does. So the program that I just showed you, Inky, actually has an accommodation for that. Okay. So it's called a it's called a to do command, and when you when you're writing and you know that you want to have something either go somewhere or put in some information, you in all capitals you just write to do all is one word, and then there uh, up at the top of the program it will tell you where all your to dos are. Oh, nice. Yeah. So then when you have like a thousand lines of code, you can see on line two hundred I have a to do, so I need to go back there and either put in an ending or or you know or do something or yeah. do something with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, does and so does the Inky give you like a flowchart view kind of, of of it? Can you look at a flowchart at all? Or Inky doesn't do that. There's another okay. program called Twine. I don't know if you've ever seen Twine. That's another one. I'll send you a link for that one. But okay. Twine actually, it's a choose your own adventure software building program like Inky, but it works completely on the flowchart model. Okay. So and you I can like actually, the flowchart because you can kind of see like how how many levels in your path goes, and you know, make sure I like I like to have everything balanced nicely. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm curious about the research that you must have done too, because you obviously know about my, you know, not about Minecraft, but you know, you know, you know how to play Minecraft. It's pretty, pretty clear. <laughs> so do you play Minecraft yourself? Um, I, you know, so I, I mentioned that I, I worked on that server for King Tut's tomb or basically. So, yeah. so, you know, I, I won't lie and say I did it all myself, but what I did is I had, um, I hired a couple middle schoolers being my kids and their friends <laughs> and they helped me because you know you actually start to try to play in ancient Egypt and modern day Washington DC and Minecraft and that's a big undertaking and so um 
So they were kind of my master architects. I built like the whole like Lincoln Memorial, I think, and the Natural History Museum and stuff like that, um, as far as it goes. And I told them, I, I, I helped lay out the tomb because I really wanted like the tomb to be like perfect in, in uh, Minecraft King Tut's tomb and stuff like that. So um, I, I do know how to play. I haven't played in ages. Ever since I think like Microsoft took over, I, I have not. Yeah. I've been able to keep up, but, but, and whenever I do write, um, anything to do with Minecraft, I always send it to my, my son and I'm like, Hey, read this over, make sure I don't sound like a complete idiot, you know, because <laughs> even, <laughs> even one wrong word and people will be like, that person doesn't know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Having the beta reader is so important. It uh, really is. I, I have a funny story for you for beta readers. Uh, one of my books, Flying Feet, which was about a Korean kid in Canada um, who's into Taekwondo and gets into mixed martial arts. He, and because he's Korean, and I was teaching uh, at a Korean school at the time, I, um, I had some Korean language in it. So I, I had my students read it to make sure that it was all correct. And they all read it. They all gave it the pass, said it's fine. And then it went to publication and everything. And then like the day, like the next day, practically, one of them said to me, oh, by the way, you use the word hasio where you, where you should be using, using anyang. <laughs> but I was like, well, why didn't you tell me that last <laughs> week? Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Well, and it's, it's funny, I'll say like something with the Minecraft book, there's like a limited amount of creative, creative liberty you can take in something like that. Like, for example, there, there's one path where you do, you decide to like start a zoo and I'm like, oh yeah, there's horses and there's pigs and there's elephants and giraffes. And someone, you know, leaves me a review and they're like, there are no elephants and giraffes in Minecraft, one star. And I'm like, what? I'm trying to be creative here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, you got the Minecraft purist. <laughs> you gotta be a purist on something like I learned my lesson. So. <laughs> Your Minecraft server, I'm really curious about that because we did that too. We have a Minecraft club here at the library. And I mean, not right now, but you know, during non pandemic times, we do. And it's probably one of our most popular clubs still. There's like dozens of kids. We'll fill up the room and we actually have to turn people away. It's yeah. so busy. Uh, we have our own server as well, just for safety reasons, so that, you know, it's only the kids playing on it and uh, and nobody else. And we also had to cut off things like survival mode so that they can't kill each other. Yeah. Because we discovered that when you do that, it, it's, yeah, it, it's not a good involved. show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is your is your server still up? Like, do you still my server is not still up. So, you know, I had my server back way back before Microsoft had acquired yeah. um, and everything like that. And honestly, just keeping up to date with the server and making sure people aren't like getting past your security protocols and blowing up stuff. It was like more than I, more than I could handle. So I think I had it up for like the first two years of the book's um, release. And then I was like, all right, I can, I can let this go. Yeah. It's kind of a full job all on its own. It really is. Yeah. And I, just, job, I, I, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. yeah. So it was fun and it was a great marketing tactic when the book came out. I think it really did help as far as like the appeal of the book and stuff like that. But yeah, it had, it had run its course. So yeah. Yeah. Do you still have a copy of the scratch program that you did? I do now that's still up. So because yeah. scratch keeps everything online. So you can either um, well, if you go to my website, I have a bunch of different scratch games that I've written in there and then a link to my um, scratch profile where you can see all my different games. Oh, awesome. I'll put a link to it because that's also one of our most popular programs is scratch. Yeah, I love I love scratch. I mean, like, so I, yeah, I was uh, an engineer and I took programming and like I was, I think my favorite was back I took an artificial intelligence class and I wrote this game called like Castle of Doom, where you went into this castle and you found like, you know, um, the ghost of Merlin, Ex Excalibur and stuff like that. And I, it was, I'd written it in Pascal way back in the day um, on my computer, but I rewrote it in scratch. And so you can actually play my college artificial intelligence game that I wrote, so. That's excellent. So I, I, I think that's really fascinating and uh, really inspiring for, for kids. The fact that you, you didn't grow up, you know, going to university, taking creative writing and then becoming an author. You were an engineer first. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Like what, like at what point did you go from uh, engineer, which you obviously still love the way that you talk about it to going into becoming a writer? Yeah. You know, and so I, th I think that the, the common link with there was, I always liked being creative. And so I did do a lot of, um, I was an electrical engineer, chip designer. And so it was a lot of uh, programming, but you're programming like hardware design and stuff like that. So I did love that aspect of the job, but you know, after I had like two kids, 
and it's hard working a full-time engineering job and, and having two kids and everything like that. I mean, it's doable, but I was like, all right, well, I wonder if there's something else I can pursue. And I'd always been a big reader, but I'd never considered myself a writer at that point. And, but I was like, you know, what? maybe I could write a book. Why not create my own world? You know, um, I think a lot of people think that, right. You know, everyone's like, I could write a book. And so I, tr I tried it and I wrote a book and I wrote a sequel and then there's another sequel. And I was like, I really enjoy this. And so it was after I'd been writing about four years that I started writing full time. So I, I retired from engineering, started writing full time. I've been doing that for, this is my 13th year of that. And, um, but I do still love the engineering. Um, like I said, I coded games in scratch. I, I, I'm not sure if you saw it on Facebook, but I just sold a book to Chicago Review Press. And it's basically, it's for this uh, series they have called Women of Power, and it's going to feature 15 women in engineering and coding who are, you know, changing the world, doing great things, all, all sorts of fun stuff like that. So that's like, so it's like this nonfiction book that I'm writing that goes back to my engineering roots. And so I'm excited about that. I did see that actually. Congratulations. That's, Thank you. that's so amazing. It's fun. I know. Yeah. I just have to write it now. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, that's the, yeah, that's the hard part. <laughs> Some people think the hard part is selling the book, but in this case, the writing, I'm like, oh, because I have to interview people. I, you know, it's not like I've written a bunch of nonfiction or anything. So I'm like, all right, I got to figure this process out. So it's a whole exciting new learning curve for me, but, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, I think it'll be fantastic. You're a good writer. So I mean, oh, thank yeah, you. you're going to have no problem with it <laughs> at all. And, and that too, I think just writing was something that you're passionate about. And this particular book that's going to be coming out I think it's needed. Like it's, you're going to inspire a whole generation to, to think to themselves that I can do this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it'll, it'll be fun. I mean, that's what D&D &D is. D&D &D is just choose your own adventure with one person starting the story and everybody else making the alternate endings. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, so, so it definitely is, is it's a, it was a fun experience, but I, I am certainly like, that was my only, my only experience playing D&D. &D, yeah. So it sounds like you have a lot on your plate. So it's probably good that you don't because you can you can get to the point that I got to where you start 3D printing all, all of the battle maps and then all of a sudden you go down that rabbit hole and you have to remind yourself that I can't do this all the time. I do have I to know. do some writing. It, yeah. It's so, I know. And it's, uh, you know, I've gotten a lot more um, schedule oriented. As far, I mean, like I've always been good about doing schedule and getting stuff done, but it's like I, I'm, I, I write science curriculum articles, you know, and I, I've been doing a lot of editing and stuff like that. And so just like trying to, I'm like, okay, I can write for one hour <laughs> today. <laughs> but you know what, if you write for an hour a day, it's better than writing for zero hours a day, you know? Yeah. So. And that's what somebody said to me. They said, even if you only write a hundred words, that's a hundred words more than you had yesterday. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like that everyday progress, you know? Yeah. Do you and have that's a... the nice thing I will say about like the interactive adventures when you're writing them is it's such a fun approachable. I mean, it's so easy because you can be like, I'm going to write like four choices today. That's all I'm going to do is write four of these little choices. And, you know, in a week or two, you have a, a book written, you know? Huh. And now you got me kind of thinking maybe I should try writing a choose your own adventure style book. You know yeah. what? I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any more out coming out in the future? Are you going to do more of them? Or? So I just wrote this uh, book on a writing book on how to write them. So yeah. That, that was what I, and then I, I, I need to write this women of power book that I'm working on. But I actually have been like, since I knew we had this coming up and I was like, I really want to write another one. So I need to look at my schedule, honestly, and see how I could fit in at least the planning of it and stuff like that, you know, and I think that's the thing. It's like, I don't have to work for two hours, three hours a day on it. I just have to do a little bit. And so that's my, uh, that's my hope. I'm going to get to it. Yeah. Well, um, if, if anybody can, I I've seen how determined you are. So I have no <laughs> doubt that you'll, you'll get it done well, because you. you have all of that. And then you do all these house projects too, where you like rebuild your deck. And I, you I did all the <laughs> like I'm gonna have someone come do my bathroom now. I, yeah. That's a big decision I just made. I'm like, I was gonna do it myself. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna hire it out. I'm gonna have someone come and do that for me. So, so you can have some time to write because you got a project you have to get done. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, have a really good rest of the day. Yeah, and you I'll, too. Thank you so yeah. much again for inviting me to be here. So, no problem. Thanks so much for coming, and I'll send you the YouTube link as soon as I've got it. Oh yeah, awesome, perfect. Thank okay. you. See ya. Okay. Bye bye. I'm going to be taking you through a short tutorial of a scripting tool called Inky 
And Inky can be used to create a choose your own adventure style game that can be played either natively in the Inky app or you can export it as an HTML file to be uh, used as a web page and then you can share it with friends, you can play it online, you can add images or you can also export it to be used in a much larger gaming tool like Unity. So this is a really great program because it has lots of different options that you can use it for. It's a fun way of keeping your creativity going and sometimes these games are kind of fun to share as well. If you haven't seen a choose your own adventure novel what you might want to do is check out one of the classics like the ones that I grew up on or you might want to find something like Pick Your Own Quest, which is a little bit more recent uh, by Connor Hoover. Uh, keeping in mind that Choose Your Own Adventure title is actually a copyright or trademarked title rather. If you are going to create a game, don't call it Choose Your Own Adventure. I call it something else uh, just to avoid and, and to respect the, uh, the trademark of Choose Your Own Adventure. With that in mind, I am going to show you how to find well. Inkle. So in finding Inky, the easiest way to find it is I type in Inkle space Inky and then in my search results and I'll, I'll put this also in the um, the write-up of, of this tutorial as well. That first one is the one that I want and this is it's uh, created by Inkle Studios. This is it right here and a couple things to notice over uh, if you scroll down a little bit over on the right hand side you'll see Inky download and this will take you to the web page which I'll show you in just a moment for your the most up-to-date version of it right now at the time of this tutorial is uh, 0.11 and then on the left hand side you have a basics tutorial and a full guide so what I'm going to suggest to you is after watching this tutorial go to this website click on basics tutorial it's going to take you here and this will give you a really good reminder of the things that I've gone over and in this tutorial they're going to use a little bit more scripting terminology which I won't use I'm going to use some terminology that I think will make more sense to people who are not programmers and don't do this very often and then when you've done the basics tutorial the full guide is fantastic there's lots of things that this program can do and there are lots of ways of doing it. So keeping that in mind is that what I'm going to show you is one way of creating a game. But this, this program is really versatile. So there are many ways of using these commands to get the program to do what you want. And sometimes just a little bit of creativity and experimentation will uh, get you the results. The way to download it is if I go to download... And you can see version 11.0 or 0 0.110 rather. That's the uh, the latest version. And you want to just make sure that you're downloading the correct one for your system. If you're using a Linux system, you want the Linux. Uh, I use a Mac, so I downloaded the Mac version. If you're using Windows, uh, if you have Windows 10, for example, uh, you want Windows 64. So you have a 64-bit um, uh, system. Uh, I've already downloaded it, so I don't need to download it again, but basically that's how you download it, and then it installs pretty easily, and it will wind up looking like this. Some extra help, just because you're having trouble coming up with something creatively. One of the programs that I really like, that I find helpful, is called Don John. It's uh, used mostly for gamers, uh, people who play Dungeons & Dragons, Pathfinder, games like that. And I actually really like it because it has this thing on it here called the Random Dungeon Generator under D&D 5e. And if I click on it, it brings me here and it creates this, um, this random dungeon. So these are the parameters and I can, I can change them. I can make them a little bit different if I want a more classic map style, if I want uh, no grid want it to look like that I can decide that and then I when I click uh, construct or if I do random it'll just randomly change all of that stuff it can take a little while depending upon the speed of your computer but here we go we have um, the basics of a game so you can what I did basically for this uh, when I showed you 
I'll show you again. This here, all I really did was I took the one that um, that I generated and I copied and pasted it. So I just highlighted it, uh, Control C or Command C if you're using a Mac, and I copied it and then I pasted it right into Inkle and then I can actually start adding all of the uh, text. If you do something like that, I am going to say that you should credit Don John uh, for it. You should give them acknowledgement just uh, because you didn't come up with it completely on your own. So it's a good idea to just just say um, that you came up with a story using the random dungeon generator from uh, Don John. And I'll show you how to do that next week. The other program I really like, if you're wanting to create a map for uh, you know for your for your game and have that as an image. If you you can't show images in the native program of Inkle, but you can show it if you have it as a uh, HTML file. So this is Incarnate, which I really like Incarnate.com, and you can use this to create all sorts of uh, different types of maps. So you can do a dungeon. So here I'm going to do sort of a a quick dungeon, and then there we go. So there's the beginning of my dungeon. And then you can export this also as a JPEG file. This program uh, has a free version and a paid version. If you use the paid version, then you can actually use all of your maps for commercial purposes. So I quite like I quite like this program. It's it's really good. Uh, I'm going to actually create uh, something from, from scratch so that you can see exactly how all of this works rather than just jumping into it looking like this. But I wanted to show you what it looks like after something is completely populated. So right now, this particular story doesn't have any code in it. It's just story. On the left-hand side over here, you can see that there are numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, going all the way up to uh, two, 294. So what that means is that there are 294 lines of code and every single, uh, every single line has its own number, which will make it really easy for you if you do make a mistake and you have to debug your program, which means looking through your program for the mistake. Over on the top middle, you'll see it says no issues. If there was a, a problem with the code that didn't allow the program to work, it would actually tell me that there was an issue and it would tell me the, the line number. So then I could go to that line number, I could read it over, see what I missed, maybe I missed a comma, maybe I missed um, an asterisk, then I can fix it. Up here it says untitled .inc. So .inc is the extension that this program understands when you save it. I haven't saved this program yet. So right now it says untitled. So what I'm always going to suggest to you is that, especially with this program, because it can be a little bit buggy, so it can crash. It, this is an open source program. It's free. Lots of people contribute to it. There's lots of love for this program, but it isn't perfect. So that's what I want you to keep in mind is that sometimes it can crash. Especially if your system, if you're running a lot of other programs on your system and your system just gets overwhelmed and then suddenly you've lost everything. So save it quite often and to save it, I would go up to, you can see up here at the top, it says Inky, File, Edit, View. I'm going to click on File and then I'm going to click on Save Project. And then if I click on that, so you can see that on the left hand side, as I said, this is where your code takes place. But on the right hand side, this is actually where your game takes place. So if you wanted to play the game natively in the app, this is how you would do it. There's no code going on in my game right now, so that's there's, there's no game to play, but you can read it. When we start making a game together in just a moment, I'll show you how that works exactly. But for now, just for navigating the, the app, on the right-hand side, if that's where my mouse arrow is, if I scroll up and down, you'll notice that that scrolls up and down. If I go to the left-hand side and scroll up and down, that scrolls up and down. After today, this is actually the program or the story rather that I'm going to work on. And at the end of this tutorial, I will show you how you can uh, come up with something pretty quickly and pretty easily if you're wanting to do something, say, for a school project. If you're a teacher and you want to do something with your students, this is a really fun creative writing project. Uh, we now have our, our name which is up at the top. It says no issues, so there's no pro, pro uh, there's nothing wrong with the code. I have my code on the left hand side, my game on the right. So now I'm going to show you how to start making a game. So I'm going to go up to File, I'm going to have it start a new project. So this is what it looks like blank. There is no code and over on the right hand side it says end of story. 
because there's no code. There's nothing for it to be a story. It says untitled, so I haven't saved it yet, and there are no issues. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Save Project. Anytime you type something into the code part, it's going to show up on the right hand side as the game. If I say you have entered a dark room and that's the beginning of my story on the other side you'll see it says you have entered a dark room end of story anything on the left hand side without code next to it is automatically considered story when you're writing the story part you just start writing now when I want some sort of code I'm gonna to go to the beginning of this line hit enter bring it onto line number two and I'm gonna go forward slash forward slash and that creates a comment and you notice now that that forward slash forward slash is actually green anything else that I put after that will not show up in the game so I can say this is the start of the game when I'm programming it helps me to figure out where things are so if I'm looking for a certain especially when you have a really really long game and it's you know a thousand lines of code uh, this just makes it so that you can know you know, if you're looking for a specific, specific section, you can actually find it. And I'll show you a couple tools for, for doing that a little bit easier as well as we go on. I have a comment. I have, you have entered a dark room. Oh, and I should show you. So this is one way of doing a comment. If I wanted to do a comment with a few lines instead of just one, because now underneath this is the start of the game, this is also a comment. You'll notice shows up as, as game. It's over here. I don't want that as game. I want this to also be a comment. So instead of just going forward slash forward slash, I can go forward slash asterisk. And then at the um, end of my my comment, I'm going to go forward slash, oh, pardon me, I'm going to go asterisk forward slash. And now it's all comment. So anything in between the forward slash asterisk, asterisk forward slash is all going to be comment. So that's another way of doing comments. So you have entered a dark room, now what? So that is my, my beginning. One of the things I like to do is between story, text, and choices, I leave a blank line. And leaving a few blank lines, the game will ignore the line. But for you, visually, it'll be much easier to come back and figure out where any problems are. And also, if you want to add text to it, if you want to add story to it, you want to change something, it just makes it much easier to see if you have some, uh, some space. So I'm going to go, uh, my first choice, light a torch. My second choice, run away. So over on the game portion, we have my story. You have entered a dark room. We have light a torch, and we have run away. But if I try clicking on light a torch or run away, nothing happens. So to make them a choice, you need an asterisk. So the asterisk is shift eight. You'll notice that the asterisk is in blue. And now things have changed over on the right hand side. You have entered a dark room, light a torch is now a hyperlink. So if I bring my air, my mouse arrow over it, my mouse arrow turns into the hand. I know that it is a choosable choice and there's nothing after it. So it's basically waiting for me to make a choice and then it will continue the other line. So it will stop at line seven until I make a choice. My next choice, because I also want this to be a choice, is run away, so I'm gonna do that. So there we go, light a torch, run away. These are now my two options. If I want the options to have something to do, then I have to tell the program what I want it to do. So run away, I'm actually just going to, right underneath it, you run away and never see this room again. So not a really exciting story at the moment, but it's good for, for what we're doing. So you'll notice that that line underneath run away does not show up over on the right hand side. If I click on run away, it shows up. You run away and never see this room again. End of story. That's it. Then if I want to play it again because I want to keep this going over on the top right hand side, I have two arrows. I can rewind a single choice. So if I don't want to go all the way to the beginning of my game because I'm just testing it and I just want to go back to the choice that I just fixed, uh, I could do that. Or if I want to go to the beginning, I can restart the story. So I'm going to restart the story only because th this is the beginning. So there we go. So light a torch, run away. So right now if I click light a torch, nothing happens because there's nothing after it. 
if I want something after it, I can either click enter and I can write something underneath it, or I have another option. I can create a second section that only works if you choose light a torch. And to do that, I'm going to use the equal sign and I'm going to do three times. And you'll notice now I've got an error. So it says error. I expected the name of a knot. Basically what that means is a knot is a section of your game that is dependent upon one of these one of the choices that you've done anywhere's in your game actually not just just here so this I'm gonna call it light a torch now what you'll notice is that I have no spaces between any of the words I used uh, an underscore uh, I use the underscore just because it makes it easier for me to read but you could also do this if I put a space in between them then the section is actually called light it's not called light a torch I'm gonna go light a torch it turns blue, I hit enter, and you'll notice I still have an error. And the reason why I still have an error is because there's nothing after that choice for it to do, so it's confused, and I, so I need to keep writing, basically. I'm gonna say light a torch. You light a torch, and you can now see in the room. So you'll notice that I still have an error, and I'm gonna show you how to fix this one too, and it's because the game doesn't know what to do after that after the, that text, it has no idea what to do now because you've you've created choices, you've created a section, and now you got to tell it what to do. But what I'm going to do, just so that I don't have any errors, is I'm going to tell the game that at line 15, the game is finished. It's it's done. I can fix that and change that later, but for now, that's what I want to do. So to tell the program that something is diverting to this option, I'm going to use the minus sign and the greater than symbol and then I'm gonna put in capitals done and now you notice there's no issues this choice is absolutely complete light a torch you light a oh storch that's wrong there we go you light a torch and you can now see in the room and then that section is done but if I restart my game click light a torch it doesn't go there so I have to tell this choice to divert to light a torch the same thing as when we told the program that it's finished at line 15, we are now, instead of telling it that it's finished at line 15, we are gonna tell it to go to line 12. So to do that, the minus sign, the greater than, because that tells the program to divert somewhere else, and then I'm gonna put light a torch, and you'll notice that the divert target shows up because it, it knows to look for something like that, and there you go, light a torch. And now, when I restart the game, and I click light a torch, It says you light a torch and you can now see in the room. But there's still kind of a problem. So the problem here is that the choice, light a torch, shows up still in front of your, your text. You might want it to do that. It, it's possible. But chances are you don't. So if you don't want it to show up there, you can actually put light a torch in square brackets. I'm actually going to put all of my choices in square brackets. When you choose them, light a torch, the choice itself disappears. And then you just get the text of the game. And I can go back and say run away, end of story. So we've got two choices. We actually have a game. It's not a very exciting game, but it is a game and it is working. So you can build from this, which is really great. Something else I'm gonna show you while we're doing this is that choices can then be put into your sections as well. So you light a torch, you can now see in the room. I'm gonna give people the option of search the room for any traps or sit and wait for someone to arrive so there we go so now we have two more two more choices here so sometimes when you're working on the game and you're doing these choices it might actually come up with an error and it just you just need to keep on writing you just need to keep on going and the error will actually resolve itself as you add choices so search the room for any traps i am going to call the next section traps and then search the room for any traps I'm gonna tell it to divert to traps and then it can search for for some traps as you search the room you find there are going to be many instances of the game ending so I'm actually going to create a, a divert uh, and I'm just going to call it ending. 
And this particular divert, I'm going to go equal, equal, equal ending. And I would use this divert for probably most of my things. So I would make the ending very general. I'm going to say, um, uh, you perish in the dungeon and the village is not saved. Very unhappy ending there. And then I can tell it to finish the game. And then that's it. This is basically a choose your own adventure game. It, uh, it'll work very well. And this is a good way to get started. Uh, next week, I will show you how to do a few more different things. Uh, I'll show you how to do things like variables and add images and some author byline text in, in case you want to download, uh, in case you want to export it to HTML. But uh, for now, go to the Inky website, take a look at, at their instructions as well. There's lots of stuff that you can do with this program. I hope that you have some fun with the program and you give it a shot and definitely let me know how it goes.